All right, y'all. Thanks for joining us, John Jay. Thursday, last day of November, 2023, November 30th. And so, Gary, um, the recording, so I kind of do this on an ad hoc basis. So it depends on the content. Sometimes I keep the content only to the video membership. Sometimes part of it goes there. Sometimes I cut it up and I put parts of it on YouTube. And um, I've started using Bright Brighteon, sometimes on Rumble, but mostly Brighteon and YouTube recently. Um, so lately I've been cutting up the videos and just putting parts there. So you can just check that. I try to tell you what I'm going to do next. If I put something on the private area, I, I'm going to probably send the link to the telegram channel. That way, whoever was, is paying attention can watch the video and it's not public. So sometimes I do that. Sorry if it's, you know, random, but I'm just trying to put the content where I think it should go. Um, so let me know if you guys have a better idea. <laughs> No, it's, it's good. I, I figured it, it'd kind of be that way because I saw what you do recently is chopping them up. So I was like, he's probably doing that. What I like to do is listen yeah. to them on my drive to work and stuff like that. And, you know. Okay. You you just hear the audio? Right, okay. right. I rip that's them and then convert them. Like an audio book. That's a good idea. Okay. Yeah, that's good to know. Um, so I want to just mention a, a list of uh, cases. So so um, let me just... Let me just, I guess I never have a list of what I'm going to do first, but so I always mention aceofcoins.com. If you guys are new to this, aceofcoins.com is my home website. Uh, we have a service. It's an accounting service. I set that up just because I'm tired of trying to qualify accountants. Uh, so these guys are out of the country. They could care less what the IRS says. They will never testify against you. They cannot be subpoenaed. They cannot be summoned. They do great accounting. They knew they are experts at U.S. tax law. They keep track of all the IRS circulars. Uh, they're, I believe they're in Pakistan. And it's cryptoaccounting.com is the website. Uh, here, sometimes it's a little difficult to get a, a hold of them, but they will do the job. They'll do a very good job. Crypticaccounting.com. Um, then we have privacyfight.io. And we can mention the other one. We'll do that soon. But privacyfight.io is the video membership. You can check that out. And then... Um, let me just go into, well, before I do that, let me just talk about, so in January, we're going to put together another conference. This time it's going to be in Dallas and it's going to be really two days, I think. And so the first day is going to have a different ticket. It's going to be $97. This is tentative now, $97 for the Friday. It's going to be a full day, eight hours. And then Saturday, I'm going to call the workshop where we can actually do some more technical things and learning and hands-on and things of that nature. That's going to be closer to $500. Okay. So you guys can decide, I'm gonna put up the entire presentation so you can decide what works for you, make comments on it, but we're about what, I think six weeks. Yeah, six weeks out from that. Yeah, six weeks out from that. So I think that's plenty of time to organize it. So that's what we're looking at. I'm gonna say again, it's tentative. So that looks like January 19th and the 20th. That's a Friday and a Saturday. Okay, and it's gonna be in Dallas and it's in Carrollton. And I'll give you the name of the hotel. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me right now. Um, I'm not gonna, it doesn't matter anyways, but anyways, that's what it's gonna be. So I wanted to uh, talk about a few uh, cases. Okay, so recently you understand that I've been uh, working on, let's call it new divorce cases or divorce cases with, the, uh, with certain legal concepts, basically trying to get the court or trying to divest the court from getting involved in the marriage or getting involved in the divorce. That's what I'm really trying to do. That's why I have that series called Divorcing the State. So what I'm trying to do is end that whole drama and put the power back into the family and let them work it out. So as it turns out, we have a list of cases and there's three of them that I want to mention. So what I did is in this one case, this the wife wanted to divorce. So she paid an attorney to start a divorce proceeding against the husband. And so he called me and we were talking about the case. And I wrote a letter uh, telling the attorney to return the money because it wasn't authorized. And I also had the client stop payment on the money. Okay, so we got the money back, but I also sent the letter. And the reason why I sent the letter is because I explained why the, the attorney cannot be allowed to intrude upon this relationship in the manner in which most attorneys do. Divorce attorneys think it's okay because they've been doing it. They watch TV like everybody else. And they think, yeah, that's how we do things today. And actually, that is not how we should be doing things. And there's a jurisdictional problem with the court. So I sent this letter. It's only a one pager. And... This, I think, excluded that attorney. I think that killed the divorce proceeding. So now the wife is having to work it out with the husband. And they're still you know, at odds, but I think they can work it out. So I, I'm not going to say that's a complete success, but what I was able to do with this letter was explain the legal aspects of what the divorce involves 
And the responsibility for this, any disputes in the marriage, fall on the people in the marriage, not bringing in strangers to come and intrude upon the marriage. And what they want to do is split up property, assets, and what I call chattels, things in the household, okay? So we, we want that to stop because the status quo actually needs to be preserved. And the court's job is to preserve the status quo. And instead, what family court does is disrupt the status quo and destroy everything. Okay. Now, so in that letter, there was another client I'm working with and his wife did a similar thing. And so I shared that letter with him, not the client's name, but I gave him the body of the letter and he understood the concept. Now he signed up for my course, uh, Divorce in the State, and he watched everything, binge watched all the videos. And I think that allowed him to have a, an intelligent communication uh, con conversation with his wife and he, and I, I didn't hear from him. You know, I figure if I don't hear from somebody, it's because their problem is solved or they're dead, right? <laughs> so this guy wasn't dead. He, so I texted him a message and I said, hey, what's going on? Everything all right? And he said, he wrote back and he goes, yeah, it's great. The wife isn't going to file divorce and we want to work it out. And I told her there's going to need to be some changes. <laughs> so he was really happy about the whole thing. So it looks like that's led to, brought him back to where that's where it should be in the marriage. Okay. Solve it. You don't bring in the strangers. You don't bring in the court. You don't bring in the police power of the state. Okay, we're adults. We're not supposed to be doing something like that. If there's abuse or neglect, okay, we got the police power, fine. But not just because the husband and wife can't work something out or somebody wants to leave, okay? If one, one spouse wants to leave, then go ahead, leave. You know, no one's stopping that person from leaving. Now, the other case, uh, the third one, similar, this was a child custody case. There's no official marriage. However, I treat these all like husband wife marriages. This one is a girlfriend boyfriend, but they were kind of estranged, okay? But they have a child together and the child's only eight months old or something. And she wanted to take him out of the country. And so she, he didn't want to, but because she didn't like that he didn't agree with her, she decided to go get some strangers and gang up on him. That is get a, an attorney to file a petition for child custody and bring in the court and the police power and all this stuff and then risk taking the child because that's what the state wants to do. So I filed a motion to dismiss in that case and it shut the whole case down. No, no one's responded, no one's objected, no one said a hearing, it's just stopped, everything stopped. So I'm not saying that's a win really, but it's just showing you that this is making the, the normal players in this whole divorce family court nonsense step back and think about it, okay? Now, as it turns out, I do actually have a developed reef for divorce cases, meaning that if there's a divorce, I don't care what stage it's in, beginning, just beginning, end, you're already paying alimony, whatever. This brief explains all the legal points as to why the court does not have jurisdiction. It's probably the first of its kind. Um, and, and I need to develop it further, but I can just tell you guys this. Now, I do a lot of legal research, and lately I've been using artificial intelligence. And thanks to Ray, Ray's really been great about that, showing me a couple of things. So I actually had the artificial intelligence help me develop some of these. You know, Ray, what you see there is some of that is from the AI answering my questions. Yeah. Right, right, right. It's amazing. It's powerful. It's very powerful. Uh, so anyways, uh, I'm not going to share with you guys. You got to get my course. Okay. Hopefully you're not in that situation, but it really demonstrates what should be happening in a marriage situation and the court should not be involved. Okay. Now, here's an interesting thing. The court should not be involved in divorce, but divorce, I mean, a marriage involves uh, a contract. But it's not really a contract between two parties. But let's just say that it is. So it's a contract. The court, I would argue, may have jurisdiction over the contract, not divorce. The marriage contract, not divorce. Something to think about. So the other aspect is, okay, there's another case. Uh, there's two, two other ones. So this one gentleman, it took, this took like eight months. So this guy got gets a letter from the IRS saying he owes $150,000. You know how you, the IRS is like, Yes, you will pay this or else. It doesn't matter if they're right or wrong. And, you know, your appeals process takes it takes forever. And if you go find an attorney, they're not a competent. And then by the time you get the attorney, it's past the time limit. Forget it. It's just not even worth it. So I use their, what do you call it? Like their bureaucracy. They have this bureaucracy now. So I use their bureaucracy and I sent a letter, just one letter. In fact, I think what it is, I, I think I had a conversation with a client. And I told him what kind of letter to write. He wrote the letter. He sent it to me. I looked it over. I made a couple of changes. And he mailed that letter. This is what I like to try to do is show you guys how to do a couple of things. This guy did this, okay? So the IRS sends him a letter back like two months later saying, we're looking at your letter. <laughs> we're investigating your letter. Now, remember, this is $150,000. They're going to wipe him out. So 
it wasn't until like maybe a few weeks ago, maybe it was a couple of weeks ago, he got a letter finally and they said, you're right, we're wrong. You don't owe us $150,000. It's zero now. We fixed it. So it just goes to show you sometimes, you know, all he had to do in this case, it wasn't anything fancy. All he did was just write a letter and he explained the facts and he sent it to the right agency, the right office. It turns out that the office we sent it to was actually like, like an appeals division of the office he was working in. So it just worked out that way. But it took him like six months to finally get it right. Um, now, this is not really, these aren't really cases. I mean, these are situations, let's call them. But the other one, uh, the, the last one I'll explain here is, so I was talking to a client the other day and he said, he, he got my course in, in 2018. He wanted to be a crypto investor. So he used the LLC, he understand, he, he learned how that works, okay? so. He took my documents and created a whole new LLC uh, on his own. He didn't even call me, which is great. This is what I want you guys to do. And he did it for a different purpose. He was running a business with it. And he had to open a new bank account. So he goes to Bank of America. Remember, he, remember, he took my same documents, okay? This is way back in 2018. He did this this year for the second company. So he goes to Bank of America. I think he walked in there. And the woman at the was opening the account, she was giving him a hard time about the ownership and how he had it structured. And he showed her the BSA, Bank Secrecy Act, memorandum that I have in my banking abstract documents. You guys may be familiar with this. And he, he actually didn't just show her the documents. He actually explained them to her. He had read them and understood them. And he explained them to her. And she was so surprised that he actually read the Bank Secrecy Act. And she said, wow, no one ever reads the law. And he said, well, I do. And I understand it. And this is all you're required to do. I don't have to do all these other things you're asking me to do. And she said, you know, you're right. I'm sorry. And opened up the account. So, and he's telling everybody, you know, just, just follow the instructions that, that I give you because they work. The, the reason why they work is because they, they've been, I've made mistakes, right? So I try to do something and it doesn't work for a client. So I work through it, right? And I find out what the solution is and I publish that. And so when you see my 20 page read me first file, don't think I just made that up. This evolved over many years of making mistakes, okay? So we fixed it. It's not so much mistakes as it is the banking system changing to want more information. So anyways, that's that's what I just wanted to share with you. So weird situations with Bank of America, especially. But in any case, so uh, that's really what I, what, what I want to cover. And uh, I wanted to open up with Q&A questions. Uh, does anybody want to, there are some things I could talk about, but I just thought I'd break here and see if anybody has any questions. No. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, big dog courtyard Dallas. Where'd you get that from? It just, I did put a page up on my website. I just didn't, I didn't, I published it. I guess you found it there. Huh? Oh yeah. That's it. That is exactly right. It's on uh Rayford, uh, not yeah, Railford, right. but yeah, thank you. It's on mm -hmm. Rayford, um, Rayford road in Texas, uh, Carrollton, Texas. Anyways, I'll give you guys more information as we, as we, uh, go. yeah. Uh, I don't know if I want to take crypto. I did it. I did it for a while. We got so much crypto, and then I. I don't want to. I don't want to deal with crypto. I'm sorry. Just uh, stick with the cash. Uh, you should. You should think I should take crypto. Yeah, you should. All right. All right. Jim you says I should. It. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, maybe I should. All right. Yeah. Well, well, we'll come up with something. We'll just talk about that. Maybe you yeah, have. A, all right. right. Sounds good. All right. Yeah, and, and and Elizabeth, you're right. So the whole idea is to divest, wrench away, okay, this whole marriage thing with the court. Because this is heavy-handed. And yeah, um, the reason why I would recommend a mediator or a counselor with a marriage or a dispute in marriage is uh, because that person understands how the laws actually work in fairness. So it's good to have that person. I wouldn't go to a mediator or arbitrator to tell him what, what he wants us to do with, you know, like, property rights and things of that nature, but understand that the marriage relationship is a settled matter where the resources in that union have been allocated already to take care for everyone. So we want to keep that as much as possible close to what it was and don't let a stranger come in there and start just wreck it because he thinks that there's a better situation. But yeah, a mediator could be useful. Same with a counselor. Gary, what did you want to, what did you want to ask? Hi. Um, so I was wondering what my rights are to decide on a medical decision if I disagree with my ex. Like he right now wants mm -hmm. it to get double vaccinated and I'm saying, no, 
I refuse, I do not consent. Yeah, so so it's equal, 50-50, both parents, and they disagree. So who has the authority? I. It's going to have to just be something that's handled privately. Now, if you go to the court, the court's going to act as if it has the final word, and it will. It'll, it'll make a ruling based on a set of facts. Right. So I just suggest that the court not be involved, but I don't know. It's, this is a hard call because it's a private matter and the private matter is being taken into the court. So mm -hmm. um, the t one of the attorneys said that the judge will never make the decision. Um, the judge will decide who the parent, who the child will have right. full custody of. Exactly. That's yeah. what's going to happen. Right. Right. So and, and why should a judge decide that? Exactly. I don't, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the judge has stay out of it. So it should be between the parents. Uh, yeah, it, it should be between the parents and unless there's some uh, form of abuse or neglect. Mm -hmm. uh, I really don't think the court has jurisdiction. But yeah, that's what he'll do. He'll assign custody and then go from there. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's, it's luck of the draw, I hate to say. Mm -hmm. Unless um, I remove myself from the court system. My thinking is, okay, so if you have a, a controversy like that, uh, if someone's trying to take away custody or they're trying to use the court to take it away, they're going to have to show that you're uh, unfit or unable to be a good parent, okay? And to do that, I believe uh, it re requires an evidentiary hearing in some cases. I think it also requires uh, facts to support what the reasoning is behind this allegation. Mm -hmm. So if those facts are presented to the court, sometimes... Uh, it's important to have an evidentiary hearing and or conduct discovery. Mm -hmm. So if someone says something like in an affidavit and it's unsupported by reports or test results or something like that, I would ask for an evidentiary hearing and ask the other side to prove up such a statement because it's either a statement of fact that belongs in an affidavit or it's an opinion. If it's not supported by facts, it's an opinion and it cannot be relied upon. So I would go on that, on that uh, way to challenge those things. So, Okay, thank you so yeah, much. Sure.